The NASCAR Cup Series has the Talladega Super Speedway, and we see a relatively calm NASCAR Cup Series race at Talladega with a pretty good finish to end it off. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching NASCAR Cup Series race from Talladega Super Speedway, the Yellowwood 500. We're going to go ahead and talk about it. So before the green flag drop in today's race, a couple drivers would have to start at the rear of the field. Ty Gibbs, Tyler Reddick, and Bubba Wallace would all have to start at the rear, along with B.J. McLeod as well. Ryan Blaney for the green flag drop today. He had some radio issues, but he was able to get on the track. So at the start of the race, you have Curtis Bell lead the field from the inside with Kyle Larson on the outside. And Rosh is saying went from like fifth or sixth and was able to get the race lead in lead lap one. Then eventually Eric Amarillo got around Rosh to same and was able to take the race lead for a little bit. <clears throat> the first caution of the race will come on lap number eight for Cy Widow coming out of Ty Dillon's car. Came really loose, I think, before the race began and unfortunately went on the track bringing out the caution. We see a little bit of strategy in this race where Rosh has seen Eric Amarola, Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, Chase Brelli, Ramon, those guys who came down pit row, while the rest of the field decided to stay out. And unfortunately, Austin Center got a speeding penalty. So on the restart, you have Rosh has seen lead the field from the outside with Eric Jones on the inside, and Rosh has seen got the race lead, and then eventually Eric Jones got to the race lead. As the race was continuing on, Eric Jones leading the race, we would have the race go for a little bit, and then the big one, the really the only major wreck of the race, would end up happening on lap 24 for a big wreck going into turn number one. Harrison Byrne tried to get to the outside from 12th position, got really, really loose, got hit by Ricky Sandoz Jr. in the back, and a bunch of cars would end up getting involved, including Austin Center, Harrison Byrne, Joe Logano, Ty Gibbs, Justin Haley, Ricky Sandhouse Jr., Noah Gregson, and Justin Allgaier. Really tough break for all those cars, just Harrison Byrne was really getting slow going to corner. It was just a weird accident. Luckily, there weren't any major incidents from that. Luckily, a lot of cars were able to continue. I believe only Ty Gibbs and Harrison Byrne fell out of the race from that incident. So, it was really, really unfortunate, but luckily for everyone, it, we were everyone was okay. So then on the restart, because everyone decided to come down pit road, because Kyle Busch actually won the race off pit road, we have Kyle Busch lead the field from the inside, with Daniel Suarez on the outside, and Kyle Busch is able to get lead for second, then Daniel Suarez got the race lead. The lead would keep getting traded back, Chase Elliott would lead for a little bit, then Daniel Suarez would lead, then Eric Amarola for lead, then we see Eric Amarola get the lead back from Denny Hamlin, and Eric Amarola would continue to get the lead. And the last caution really for incident on the racetrack would come out in lap 45 of the race for Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy had a tire go down, was in the second pack, that was kind of falling back from the first group. He would fall back and basically get into the outside wall with a tire going down and unfortunately would fall out of the race. We see a little bit of strategy where guys like Eric Jones, Chris Bell, Ross Saint, and Kyle Larson would come down the road while the rest of the field would stay out. So on the restart, Denny Hamlin would lead the field from the outside with William Byron on the inside. And William Byron would let Denny Hamlin get into the lead and would take the lead. Then William Byron tried to get the lead about five laps ago in stage number one. But then four laps later, Denny Hamlin would get the lead back. As we're coming to the last lap of stage one, Denny Hamlin had the race lead. But then Denny Hamlin tried to go to the bottom to block some really strong runs from Joey Logano. And Ryan Blaney gets this really good push from, I believe, his teammate. And gets a really good push and gets up to the front and pulls off a last lap pass in stage number one to win stage number one by nine one thousandths of the second. Meanwhile, William Byron dropped out of the top 10 and did not score any stage ones. An incredible end to stage number one. We basically see a little bit of strategy in this race, whereas like Truex, Austin Hill, and Justin Allgaier stayed out. Kyle Larson, Ross just seemed, went up taking two tires, and the rest of the leaders would end up taking four tires. And then we see Landon Castle get a penalty for speeding as well. So on the race area, Kyle Larson lead the field from the inside of Eric Jones on the outside. Eric Jones would get a really strong run to take the race lead. Then Ryan Blaney would get the race lead, but a few laps later, it was getting so, so aggressive that Ryan Blaney basically fell out of the pack and started falling back to not try to cause a big one. We see a little bit of swapping back and forth between Eric Omro and Todd Gillen for the race lead. And then we see green flag pit stops on lap 98 as Eric Omro will dominate this next portion as they kind of got single file. Green flag pit stops would end up happening where guys like Brad Keselowski, Chris Buescher would first come down pit road. All the Fords would come down pit road. Then all the Toyotas would come down pit road. Chris Bell coming into pit road actually spun out and had flat tires and would get a speeding penalty as well. Then a bunch of other cars like Kyle Larson, Eric Jones, and Rosh Saint and Chase Elley would come down the road. Then the next slot, we see Tyler Reddick, Justin Haley, and Daniel Suarez come in. And then a bunch of the Fords came back into pit road. Then after all of the cycle into Papley, 
Tyler Reddick was able to get the race lead after the cycle had been completed. Then Kyle Larson, he eventually got to the race lead. Then Reddick got the lead back a few laps later. Then Kyle Larson, he got to lead. And then four, three laps ago, Larson got the lead back from Tyler Reddick. As we're coming to the white flag in stage number one, two, yeah, Kyle Larson leading with, I believe it was Tyler Reddick who was leading the race with Chase Elliott basically trying to get a really strong push around Kyle Larson. As we're coming in turn number three, Tyler Reddick would get pushed out of the line, running out of gas because he ran out of gas coming to the line. Kyle Larson looked like he was easily going to win stage number two, but Chase Lee pulls off a really strong move, and he would basically hold him off in a photo finish, and he would win stage number two over Justin Haley. Good move for Chase Lane, in my opinion, to make. You got to make up as much many points as you can, and Chase Lee basically ended up winning stage number two. And then we get to the final stage where Chase Elliott led the field from the inside with Eric Jones on the outside. And we see Eric Jones get to the race lead. Then we see Bubba Wallace lead for a minute. Then Rosh is saying he got back to the race lead. And it became back and forth a little bit between Rosh is saying and Denny Hamlin for the race lead. Then with around 35 laps to go, Ryan Blaney got around to push from Rosh is saying and he got to the race lead. Then we see all the fours start coming down pit and a couple other cars in between that would come down pit road for the first group. And then Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick are two of the fastest cars of the day. They unfortunately would end up getting speeding penalties. Then the rest of the field would end up coming down pit road. And I believe the leader would end up being Ryan Blaney, if I'm not mistaken. Kyle Larson nearly wrecked in the middle of the pack, but had a really strong save. And then eventually, Ryan Blaney got to lead with 13 or 14 to go, and it got side by side back and forth between Eric Jones and Ryan Blaney for the lead. Then, with around five or six laps to go, the caution would be thrown for Daniel Hamrick, who had his engine salt on the front stretch, basically near the entrance of the racetrack. It might be a little controversial. Hamrick was right there, and they could have kept it green, but he also did have a fire in turn number three as well. Personally, with all the safety talk that's been going on in the industry, I think it's better safe than sorry. Is it controversial? Maybe, but I think it was absolutely the right call to basically not bring safety. It was very hypocritical seeing people complain about NASCAR taking it safe, but it is what it is. So then we get to the final restart of the race where Eric Jones lead the field from the outside with Ryan Blaney on the inside. Eric Jones get a really strong restart, but Blaney was able to get a better restart. And then Chase Elliott made a really strong move to get around Eric Jones. As they're coming to the white flag, you had Chase Light and Ryan Blaney, two of their best friends, battling for the race lead. They were side by side going into turn number three. And then eventually Chase Light was able to get a really strong push, I believe from Eric Jones, and was able to clear. Ryan Blaney tries to get a run off the final corner, but it would not be enough for Ryan Blaney to get there. And coming off the final corner, Chase Lane picks up his first win, I believe, since Pocono after this qualifications. And he picks up his fifth win of 2022 and a really classic photo finish near the end of the race. Passes him at the end and takes the victory. Absolutely incredible race, in my opinion. Congratulations to Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott's been really struggling in these playoffs. Had a really bad Texas race. So a really strong bounce back race for Chase Elliott to have. Absolutely well-deserved win. He got to be there at the right position at the right time. Didn't have to do any stupidity to go out there and win. Becomes the first driver to win five races this year. He needed that bounce back race. Impending inspection. Five, first five-time winner of the year in the first round in five races in the next-gen era. Mass congratulations to Chase Elliott on picking up his fifth victory of 2022. Well-deserved victory. So now we're overall talk about the results, then look at the playoff innings, and then I'll give you my score of today's race. So Chase Elliott picks up the victory. Ryan Blaney finishes second. Blaney with a really strong day, has had a really good round of 12 so far, got third at Texas, and comes here and gets a second-place finish, scored some pretty important stage points, got a stage win earlier in the day, and gets a really strong second-place finish. Good run from Ryan Blaney. Michael McDowell finishes third. McDowell ran really well today. You already know Michael McDowell is going to be a threat at the Super Speedway races and also the road courses. Good run from Michael McDowell. Ross Chastain was one of the most aggressive drivers and one of the fastest cars of the day. Gets a really good top five finish. Of course, one of the last time we're here at Talladega. So good to see Ross Chastain get a really strong finish. Denny Hamlin, good run for Denny Hamlin. Ran fifth, ran top 10 most of the day, led a lot of laps in the day, and gets a finish he deserves. Gets a really good top five finish. Good run from Denny Hamlin. Eric Jones, who also had a really strong car today, finishes sixth. You always know that Eric Jones is going to be up front in his race as well. Good run from Eric Jones. Todd Gillen finished at seventh. Want to give a huge shout out to Todd Gillen. Todd Gillen was the most impressive driver out there. Ran top 10 pretty much every single lap of this race. 
Todd Yellen's been getting better and better as the years progress. It has been genuinely improving this year. I expect big things from Todd Gillen going into next year. And Front Row's been showing some good stuff. Good to see both Front Row cars finish in the top 10. Good run for Todd Gillen. Daniel Suarez gets a lot of really good points today. He finishes in 8th. Austin Center, good points for him today. He finishes ninth. And Chase Briscoe gets a very solid top 10 finish. Landon Castle gets a lot. How about that for Landon Castle? I saw Castle in the 77 car up around top 15. But good to see Castle. Good, a good run. William Byron, who's coming in this race already down a ton of points. He finished 12th. Not the greatest save for William Byron. Austin Hill finishes 13th. Eric Onroll, who looked like to me one of the fastest cars early in the race, he finishes 14th. Justin Haley finishes 15th. Uh, Bubba Walls finishes 16th. Disappointing for Bubba, considering I expected Bubba to be a threat to win the race today. Bubba was never really a contender. That 45 car just has not seemed good the last couple of weeks. It's a shame, too, because before the round of 12 began, they looked really, really good. It's a shame that the last couple of races haven't gone good for Bubba. Hopefully, he improves going forward. It was my pick to win, so... It's a shame. Chris Bell finishes in 17th. Kyle Lars, who actually got a, basically had a good some good runs today, got a lot of points. He finishes 18th, though. Noah Grace, who is substituting for Alex Bowman, who is out due to concussion protocols. We're unclear. It's unclear if Bowman will be back next week or not. Grayson was in the top 10 in the last 15 laps. He finishes 19th. Not a bad run from Noah Grayson. Kyle Busch, who led some laps today, he finishes 20th. Decent run. Good to see that he survived the race and didn't crash out. It seems like he's had three or four straight DNS. Good to see Kyle Busch not have problems, but unfortunately, 25th is the best he can finish. Cole Custer finishes 21st. Ricky Sennhouse Jr. finishes 22nd. Ty Dillon finishes 23rd. Brad Kozlowski, unfortunately, got that speeding penalty, who I think had one of the best cars and probably was going to have a shot at winning. He finishes 24th. Chris Buescher finishes 25th. Mark Trick Jr. finishes 26th. Joey Logano, who just really was not that aggressive today, finishes 27th. Kyle Reddick, after his field trouble, finishes 28th. Kevin Hark finishes in 29th. 30th for Justin Allgaier, who was involved in the ruck, substituting and taking over for Noah Gregson, who was, of course, in the 48 car. J.J. Lee finishes 31st. Cody Ware finishes 32nd. B.J. McCaw finishes 33rd. Daniel Hemrick, after electrical issues and bringing out the final caution, finishes 34th. Corla Joy finishes 35th. Harrison Byrne finishes 36th. And finishing last in 37th place is Todd is Ty Gibbs. So now we're going to talk about the overall race, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the playoff standings after this weekend's race here at Talladega. Let's go ahead and take a look at the playoff standings. All right, so now let's take a look at the playoff standings. So Chase Lane basically advances after his win. Ryan Blaney sits second, 32 points above the cutoff line. Rosh Hussain is 20 above the cutoff line. Denny Hamill is 21 above the cutoff line. Joe Logano currently at the moment is 10 of 18 above the cutoff line. Kyle Larson also is 18 above the cutoff line. Daniel Suarez is 12 above the cutoff line. And right now, uh, Chase Briscoe and Austin are, are tied for zero points. The four below, of course, Austin Hick is zero below. William Byron, who's 11 below. Chris Bell, who is 33 below. And Alex Bowman, who's 54 below. Looking at the playoff standings, even though William Byron's in a decent position, get lost some points today, he's going to have to probably go in there and win. I think Cinder can win. Briscoe tied because he's got a better finish. And then I think right now, everyone, I would say probably right now, if you're above 15 points ahead, I think you're safe. So unless Larson and Logano just struggle in the race, I think they should be okay. I think everyone else above is in really good shape to make it to the next round. So overall, I'm going to talk about the overall race as a whole and give you my score on today's race. This was one of the best Talladega races I genuinely have ever watched. Lots of really good side-by-side -side racing. The stages were absolutely fantastic. Lots of great side-by-side. -side. Fantastic racing for the lead up front. And in my opinion, a really solid and clean race. Sure, he did have one big one early. But really, it was only took about four, two cars really out of the race. And everyone was still able to continue on in this race. And for a week that we've been hearing about all the safety issues and stuff, it's good to see a much more cleaner race that doesn't have a lot of controversy near the end. Very good race, in my opinion. I'm giving today's NASCAR Cup Series race at Talladega a 9.8 out of 10. This race would have been perfect score if we saw a tiny bit more side-by-side -side racing. But other than that, this is definitely a top five race of the year for sure. This race came so close to being a perfect race for me. If you have a little more side-by-side, -side, this race is perfect. But regardless, this is one of the best races of the year for sure. A 9.8 out of 10 is my score for today's NASCAR Cup Series race at Talladega Super Speedway. So anyway, that is your today's NASCAR Cup Series race view from Talladega Super Speedway. I want to thank guys for watching.
Please hit like and subscribe to the channel. Notifications on to be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And support me on Patreon as well. Links in the description below for that. And comment below your thoughts on today's race. What are your thoughts on today's race at Talladega? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulate Chase Elliott picking up his fifth victory of 2022. Let me know in the comments below. Tomorrow on my channel, we're going to have a NASCAR news video. We're going to be discussing about some of the safety issues that have been talked about in the media. We'll also talk about some other stuff that's been announced over the last couple of days. Then Tuesday is going to be race picks for the Charlotte Roval. Wednesday, a NASCAR news video, more than likely. Thursday, a special video is probably coming out. Friday, we'll probably have another race review or something along those lines coming out. And other content will be on the way for you guys through the rest of the week. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.